which actor most squandered an otherwise promising career. Jussie Smollett has to be in the running on this one. One crazy act and he'll never work in the industry again. In addition to the legal issues it has brought him. He was working since 1990 and has been in some pretty big productions. He was hot stuff for a while. All those years of building his career, all that work and that promising future just wiped away in an evening of pure and utter insanity. WTF was he thinking? Completely squandered everything he had worked for, in addition to making life that bit harder for real victims of hate crimes. I hope he's not beating himself up about this. This comment is why I understand who the first person was talking about. Thank you. Army Hammer. This name still throws me off. It's like if there was someone named Dunky Donut. He's the great grandson of Armand Hammer, who had a controlling interest in the company that owned the Armand Hammer brand, but only because he bought up enough stock to get on the board, because he thought it was funny. The names are related, though, because Armand Hammer's father was a socialist who named him after the Armand Hammer logo, which apparently is fairly old, and was adopted by both the baking soda brand and various socialist parties. Terence Howard not continuing his role as James Rhodes slash War Machine in Iron Man. To be fair Marvel was lowballing him on money for Iron Man 2, but it would have probably paid off if he continued in subsequent Iron Man slash Avengers films. He still seems pretty bitter about the whole thing. Thankfully, we got Don Cheadle out of it, and he's definitely good. But yeah, the change was very abrupt. Abrupt yeah, but I love Cheadle in the role. I got used to him very quickly in Iron Man 2, and came to love his personality and character. Matthew Fox pretty much did nothing after Lost. Dom Monaghan basically said in an interview, just because you're on a show together doesn't mean you're friends about him. Might be a peen. The cast of Firefly used to say similar things about Adam Baldwin. Miss Chabarton quit the arc because she didn't want to become typecast. Now she can't get cast for any type. I know she was young, but can you imagine stepping away from hit, show where they are paying you thousands an episode. No matter what she wanted out of her career she could have waited or worked around her schedule. Harrison Ford could have gone on to be a really good finished carpenter, even a cabinet maker. After director Francis Ford Coppola's film The Godfather was a success, he hired Ford to expand his office and gave him small roles in his next two films, The Conversation, 1974, and Apocalypse Now. That is the funniest damned thing I've heard all week. Lee Mitchell. The lead in the Funny Girl revival was hers for the taking, but she spent her entire career being mean and difficult to work with and now, shocker, no one wants to work with her. With her talent, she should have taken Broadway by storm and scored the lead in a hit movie musical or two. And this isn't about her being more or less talented than anyone else in the Glee cast, but her voice and acting style were made for musical theater. She was pretty well known for being difficult after Spring Awakening, and I seem to remember some scuttlebutt about her having a whole attitude about going to Hollywood for Glee. I'm going off memory, but I seem to recall that as well. A. I'm a Hollywood actor now, I don't need to lower myself to Broadway kind of vibe. Katie Holmes had so many projects going until she got with Tom Cruise. He basically controlled everything she did from what I heard. He's the reason she wasn't in the dark night. Scientology Nuff said. Thora Birch. Though I suppose she didn't squander it so much as her parents sabotaged it. I believe she's cast in Tim Burton's upcoming Wednesday Adams Family adaptation. I look forward to seeing her again. Between her and Catherine Zeta-Jones being cast, I'm pretty dang excited to see how it turns out. This thread has me constantly having to stop and google people. Wish people could at least include the context of how they ruined their career. They're using abbreviations too, so I can't even make guesses. Charlie Sheen. Could have been one of the greats. Went from Platoon in 1986 to Wall Street in 1987, and then shooting his fiancée and future wife of John Travolta, Kelly Preston in the arm accidentally by 1990. And then a series of ups and downs, before we all saw the unraveling into tiger blood, and winning two decades later. Excuse me, did you just gloss over Hot Shots, Parts 1 and Dukes, and Major League, I Love Wild Thing. Lindsay Lohan. She could have reached Emma Stone status. 
my personal theory is that Emma Stone's career took off when it did because Hollywood needed to replace Lohan when she fell off. And it worked. Stone has kind of the same vibe as Lalo, but is also a really good actress in her own right. Bill Simmons refers to this as a market correction, when two actors fulfill the same function, so they always end up casting the better one. Kevin Costner basically having the career Mark Harmon might have had Costner not existed, for example. I can't believe nobody has mentioned Mickey Rourke. He was the leading man in a number of successful movies in the 80s then left Hollywood to become a boxer. His boxing career did so much damage to his face that he required reconstructive surgery. He did return to acting, but his career never returned to anything close to the meteoric rise it had before. The wrestler was freaking amazing. Yay, wasn't he nominated for the Best Actor Academy Award for that? Rick Moranis would likely be one of the most celebrated comic actors of all time by now, but he gave it all up in the 1990s to raise his kids after his wife passed away. Much respect. I wouldn't call that squandered though, but was a shame. Surely this needs to include Danny Masterson, or whatever that guy's name was from that 70s show. Combine him with the girl from Smallville and you have some serious messed up stuff. Alison Mack. Yeah, her story is crazy. Okay, there's squandered a career, and then there's eagerly became the Baroness to a violent sexually abusive cult leader's version of Cobra Commander. Mac can do the hardest time there is as far as I'm concerned. Jennifer Grey, Dirty Dancing, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, was sensitive about her large notes because of her school years and early acting career. With Dirty Dancing being a hit, she finally had the money to get herself in a plasty. Unfortunately, Hollywood disagreed and felt she lost her distinctive look, she was deemed too plain for the big screen, and couldn't build off her success. She continued working, but didn't get to have a career as leading lady. The saddest part is, that her old nose was perfectly fine. Had an incredible crush on her back in the 80s. Edward Furlong. Terminator 2, American History X. The man was in so many great things, and on his way to become a legend. Then it all went downhill. Such a shame. Well a quick look at his wiki states that at 15 his 28 year old tutor began raping and abusing him over the subsequent years. That followed so I'm certain that probably played into the resulting issues he faced. What the hell. Till. Growing up sane as a child actor always seems like a miracle when it happens. The one guy who was on Matrix? Forgot his name, but he tried defaming all the actors involved when he was told he will not be coming into the sequels. He is reduced to obscurity now. You talking about the actor who played Tank? Cause he just magically disappears between movies with one throwaway line about him dying. He had a great replacement though. Whereas the replacement for the Oracle really lessened the movie. I know the original actress died, but they could have found a better replacement. Emile Hirsch after he choked an executive at Sundance. Always thought of he was born a decade earlier his career world been solid. Really had the 90s heartthrob look. Lindsay Lohan the heights her career cold seen if she'd just gotten her crap together. Her life just makes me sad. Her parents fricked her up from an early age. She never had a chance. Yeah I read stuff like this and feel bad for her mostly. Getting her crap together is just putting all the pressure on her, whereas her own family slash environment have fricked her up consistently. Denise Crosby playing Lieutenant. Tasha Yar on Star Trek, TNG, and Jumping Ship, pun intended, just before it got really big. Jennifer Grey from Dirty Dancing getting a nose job. I feel like the same thing happened to Ashley Tisdale. It really changed her face from easily recognizable to just another face in the crowd. Renee Zellweger has entered the chat. Katherine Heagle. I slightly remember this, she went from doing feature film, 27 dresses, knocked up, and then the next thing I saw her in was a kitty litter commercial. And that's why you don't screw with Shonda Rhimes. Robert Downey Jr. before Iron Man. People forget how much of a bounce back that was for him. Definitely the greatest Hollywood comeback ever. Roblo pulled himself back pretty well. Nowhere near the way RDJ did but still noteworthy. Pretty sure Gina Carano squandered her career. She made a few movies, but was really breaking out in the Mandalorian as Cara Dune. 
It looked like she was gonna be the main character in a spin-off Disney Plus series until she started spouting off stuff on Twitter that basically, if I heard correctly, got her fired off Mandalorian and cancelled her new show before it started. She may be able to recover, but time will tell. Trump aside. What's worse is that she was given a second chance after she spouted some BS about COVID. Then came the Holocaust thing on Instagram. For my older editors, Shannon Doherty from Beverly Hills 90210. Her attitude got her tossed from that show. Her fights with Jenny Garth were famous. Then she got onto Charmed, and the same thing happened with Alyssa Milano. And her career pretty much dropped after that, because she was considered a bitch and too difficult to work with. Now, sadly, she has stage 4 terminal breast cancer. Although she claims she feels she has 10, 15 more years to live the fact is that she doesn't. When it spreads she'll have months. She also starred in Heathers. One of my favorite 8 is flicks. Dolph Lundgren. Could have been a great chemical engineer. A super ripped scientist with a mesh tank top named Drive. Dolph Lundgren. He can smell crime. River Phoenix. He could have been what Leo became. And more. He was a very beautiful and gifted human being. He was highly addicted to heroin and could not manage his addiction. He tried to leave Los Angeles which he believed held too many temptations for him. However, he kept getting drawn back for auditions etc. and would fall off the wagon. Jarul turned down an offer to remain in the Fast and the Furious franchise after the original movie because he thought they were lowballing him with their offer. After he turned them, they wrote in a new character to fill the slot in script that Jarul would have had and gave the part to Ludacris. Luda gets paid so much from the fast movers he doesn't need to rap anymore. Cuba Gooding Jr. won an Oscar and then nothing. It is true what they say, you know your career is over when you make a movie with dogs. I actually really enjoyed his acting in Rat Race. The movie that committed the major crime of having John Cleese and Rowan Atkinson in the same scene, then not having them interact at all. Shia LaBeef. He was on his way up, and Transformers had cemented him as someone who could lead a movie. You can debate about his talent and the quality of the movies, but any problems with them didn't have anything to do with him. I feel like his downfall was growing up. Not that he shouldn't have pursued more, but that film school pretentious attitude between projects. If he wasn't famous he might have grown out of it, and we'd see some great stuff. Because he was famous he had extra eyes watching, when he made dumb kid decisions, like fighting with 4chan, and that's what killed him. He was making interesting things. The problem is was. Abusing women. Katherine Hegel was everywhere, and then gone. She badmouthed so many people, writers, shows and movies, that it was inevitable. I wonder if this is what happened with January Jones. I vaguely remember her developing a bad reputation during Mad Men's run. There are a lot of actresses that have bad reputations, but now that the Harvey Weinstein info came out where it's been proven he was purposely saying terrible things about the actresses and blackballing the ones that wouldn't blow him, I question every and all bad reputation rumors. Gary Dorden who played Warwick on CSI. I really thought he had leading man potential and was going to transition to the big screen like Clue needed. I love CSI and he was one of my favorites. Wish I could see him in more. The first few seasons of the original CSI were fantastic. But like all crime procedurals, it hit rock bottom and kept digging and digging. Jan Michael Vincent. People are joking, but he was a teen heartthrob who died with missing limbs and a traumatic brain injury. Drugs and alcohol. George Lazenby. The guy that followed Sean Connery as James Bond and then just stopped after one film. To be fair, when they made a documentary about this, Becoming Bond, I believe, it turned out there were a lot of unreasonable things in the contract that EON asked George Lazenby to sign. They wanted him to live his entire life, both on and off screen, in a manner that fit the image of James Bond. That world meant five years of needing to dress, shave, eat and drink like 007, even on his days off. He let his beard grow a bit during the press tour for the one movie he did, because beards were in at the time, and the studio pitched a fit. He would have shaved in time to start shooting the next one, but they were angry anyway. Bond doesn't wear a beard, so Lazenby can't have one either. 
plus on Her Majesty's Secret Service was his first paid acting job, ever, so he hadn't come up in the industry. He wasn't used to those kinds of expectations. I wouldn't have signed a lifestyle contract under those circumstances, and it's not too surprising he didn't want to either. So, he went and did something else with his life. He was a competitive BMX biker, he raised a family. He's actually pretty rich now from various real estate investments, I understand. It's not Hollywood's vision of success, but there's something to be said for it. Back in the 80s John Eric Hexham was on a show, and was just starting to become well known, when he shot himself with a blank. That is one crazy way, to end a promising career in a split second. I remember when that happened. He was the star of a hit show, and it happened on set. I'm working on an essay about him right now. He would have been a Schwarzenegger or Stallone but died early. He was an organ donor, which wasn't as common back then, and his mom gave everything possible away to help as many people as she could. She didn't want his death to be meaningless. Josh Hartnett, but to be fair, it was his personal choice. He was great on Penny Dreadful. I've never really been a fan of his until Penny Dreadful. He did a great job with that role. His scenes with Billy Piper were particularly impressive. Still sad it only lasted 3 seasons. I feel like Corey Monteith, main dude from the early seasons of Glee, had a very bright future. Sadly the guy always had some issues with addiction, which eventually took him. Shame. That whole damn cast was cursed. But like seriously, I can't. I mean, yeah the cast is massive in the sheer quantity, but the amount of disturbing crap that went down there is just otherworldly. Kevin Spassy. You know why. He already had a lengthy successful career by the time he got cancelled though. TJ. Miller was doing pretty good until his public freakout. Wasn't he screaming about a bomb or something? Seen young she did no way out and bladder on her. Then she went bad crap over not getting Catwoman. And after Ace Ventura faded into obscurity. Tim Burton tried to be nice to her and tell her no in a nice way. She then dressed up in a homemade Catwoman suit and went looking for Burton on the studio lot. She was cracking her whip and acting like crazy person. Security had to ask her to politely leave the premises. Heath Ledger. Hurts, but he could have done so much more. Not an actor, but Mike Richards destroyed his career by seemingly giving himself the Jeopardy hosting job. Everyone was annoyed when he was announced as host, then his past comments came out, so he stepped down from the hosting gig and now he's also out as executive producer. What gets me most about Mike Richards is that the guy already had an incredibly successful TV career. Game show production is notoriously competitive and cutthroat, and by all accounts he was not bad at it. He'd worked as executive producer on Price is Right, who wants to be a millionaire, Wheel of Fortune, all before he ever got the executive producership of Jeopardy, pulled down an easy $6 million career total, and was set to make far more. But, no he was convinced he needed to be in front of the camera. The one thing that, by audience consensus, he did not have a great talent for, and now he's lost both the presenting gig and a very successful TV production career. True self-sabotage. I used to love Boy Meets World and based off interviews they did after the show they all thought they would be big but none of them got any work for a while. I think they're all working now in various fields, but I'm surprised they didn't immediately shoot up in popularity once the show ended. I heard an interview with Danielle Fischl where she basically said that at the time the show ended, she had a big ego and thought she was too good for daytime soaps but no one else wanted to hire her. I'm paraphrasing something I read years ago so don't quote me. I went to middle and high school with her. Can confirm she was insufferable from 6th grade on. And yes she did bring Lance based a prom at Calabasas High. Faye Dunaway was set to become Hollywood royalty with Bonnie and Clyde, Chinatown, and Network under her belt. But by the late 70s, her onset behavior became the stuff of legend. She got branded with a cursed difficult label, then Mommy Dearest came out, and that was pretty much it. Then Bette Davis came out against her, and that was pretty much it for her, in leading roles in film. She had to start doing television, and many bit parts and guest appearances. A true fall from her former glory. I have to wonder how many of these difficult labels were because of people like Harvey Weinstein. Taylor Lautner. All those sit-ups got him nowhere. 
He was in this show Cuckoo on BBC and was actually fantastic. I was so shocked, but dude has great comedic chops. Maybe drama was the wrong path for him. Amber Heard. Well at least it's squandered in the eyes of the public. Ezra Miller still has a role as The Flash after choking and body slumming a woman on video, so it seems DC isn't too concerned about their stars assaulting people. Letitia Wright. She was the obvious choice to replace Chadwick Boseman as Black Panther. Then, apropos of nothing, she went on an anti-vax and anti-trans rant on Twitter. Then played the victim card when people told her off. Now she's not going to be BP. It would be a career maker for life. She just signed on to be in a crap ton of Marvel movies the other day. She's far from fading away. But yeah, stuff she tweeted was really stupid. Even though he is financially very successful, I'd say Johnny Depp has squandered his artistic potential by allowing himself to be eternally typecast as some variation of Hunter S. Thompson slash Jack Sparrow to the point where he can't even knock that crap off in private. He used to be someone that could have pulled off any role, now he's just doing a shtick. I think it would have done him wonders to do a few outhouse movies in between. Something with a director that would challenge him as an actor. Sweeney Todd. As good as that movie it's tough to get away from the Jack Sparrow vibe. Back in the day though, it was freaking years before I realized Edward Sissorhans was Johnny Depp. Jennifer Lawrence is starting to trend this way. She was absolutely everywhere for a while. X-Men, Hunger Games, Silver Linings Playbook, American Hustle, Mother, etc. But since 2017 she really hasn't done much. Not really sure what the issue is, maybe she's just worn out and taking some time off. Shannon Doherty is the first one that comes to mind. Lead female role on the hottest show on TV at the time and just couldn't stop herself from blowing it all up. It's must suck to peak at an age when you're too young to appreciate it. And not just once. She had two tries that I know of with spelling 90,210 and charmed. Plus, I liked her acting, though it is a personal assessment and people who know about acting might disagree. Lindsay Lohan and Amanda Bynes. Rosen. I think she's done now. Jessica Biel comes to mind. She publicly stated that it's so hard being her. Because of how good looking she is, she never gets casted for roles anymore, which led to no one wanting to cast her. Jessica Biel always looks like she knows she's about to get punched in the face, but isn't exactly sure of when it's going to happen. Bam Margera. He's royally fricked his career. Have you seen the egg account that saved his super crazy posts he deleted? It's wild. Philip Seymour Hoffman. No question. A bad relapse and he's gone. Best character actor of our generation arguably. Samuel L. Jackson. I haven't seen him in anything new for at least a month. I'm sure he'll just do two movies next month to keep his numbers up. Tom Cesar T. This should be the number one answer. Dude became a breakout star, had offers piling up, then blew it all on drugs. He was so good in saving Private Ryan and in Black Hawk Down. On a related note with that movie, it's amazing to look at who is in that cast that only relatively recently broke out as a big name. Ty Burrell, Tom Hardy, Jeremy Piven, Nicolaj Costa Wald or to name a few. Seriously look up that cast and it's amazing how many recognizable actors are in there. Edward Norton kind of died off. His father runs slash owns a hedge fund and he is a billionaire, same as Julia Louis-Dreyfus. I think he's a terrific actor and she is insanely funny and talented, but when you have billions acting, could be considered just a phase. Haven't seen Elizabeth Berkley on the list yet. Her career was really taking off, she then took the wrong role in show Gerald's and it basically stopped her career cold. Wasn't fair to the actress, but she had so much potential before that. All them caffeine pills did their damage. Army Hammer comes to mind. Sexual sadist. Brad Renfro. Excellent in The Client as a kid, as well as Sleepers. Excellent in then movie bully as an adult, plus some other films. Drugs took it all away. James Franco. I'll probably be buried by now, but I'm surprised no one brought him up yet. First person that comes to mind is Zachary Quinto. 
amazing actor, great guy, but he seems to have done loads of huge roles, American Horror Story, Star Trek, Heroes, and then he just kinda faded out, I feel like I haven't heard of him in ages, Anton Yelchin also, he died way, way too young, that tore me up, also, Firuza Bork, I think she had amazing acting potential, but I've heard that she's apparently begin to witchcraft and animal sacrifice, so that's probably got around to people in the industry. I think Quinto is one of those go for the interesting roles vs so this is gonna make me a lot of money. Thora Birch, no contest. She was about to be Scarlett Johansson, Brie Larson, and Jennifer Kennelly rolled into one, until she let her nut job x30 star dad micromanage her career and drive it into a ditch. Brown Atkinson had a promising career ahead of him as an electrical engineer. Threw it all away for TV and film, where he didn't even get a speaking role. River Phoenix, sad reasons, but I have always wondered what could have been. Absolutely cannot believe anyone hasn't mentioned Chris Farley, a legend of a comic and actor. Heath Ledger, he just died too soon. Philip Seymour Hoffman too. Man could he act, 